I've been muted for the last three hours. What's going on everyone? Austin John plays here and today I'm going to be going over some of my favorite auto builds that you may want to be using in Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. I recorded two videos this morning over th about three hours and I realize now that after I exported the audio to enhance it, I, I, I didn't have any voice. First of all, I want to talk about auto builds. Auto build is going to be your last ability that you're going to be able to get in Tears of the Kingdom that makes it so that you can just build things out of thin air or, or much more conveniently, whenever you just have the resources lying around, you can just assemble them together. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The bad part for me is I'm now re-recording this video. The good part for you is it's now going to be a lot more concise. Now, I want to say if you don't want to follow my advice on these auto builds, that is perfectly fine. I'm going to show you the playground where I like to figure out auto builds. And that's going to be here, Tarrytown. Specifically, the Bolson Construction Yard. Now, there's Tarrytown. It's beautiful as it's always been. It's mostly unchanged. But this large area of wetland that used to be fantastic for farming certain materials is now just... It's, it's just a giant construction yard, but it has pretty much every single thing that you're going to need to mess around with different builds. It has fans, it has wings, it has balloons, it has giant tires. Inside of here you have 4x4 four four pieces of wood which are very handy to create auto builds with. And over here next to this tall modular building is going to be an area that there's going to be a very short side quest that the ladies who used to run the uh that the ladies who used to run the sand seal racing in breath of the wild there's going to be a vehicle here and they say well we need a way to steer it all you need to do is take one steering stick out of your inventory put it on top you have three minutes to hit five lights that are you know 20 seconds away and then after that's done if you ever come back or save and reload there's going to be a free construction stick here for you to build with that's going to be the basis of everything we're going to be talking about in this episode. Almost all of these builds are going to be small, lightweight, and definitely easy to duplicate. First, let's talk about vehicles. The first one that I think everyone should have saved is going to be an ATV, all-terrain vehicle. I'm not going to be making it out of these small wheels because they are not good for going over rough terrain, especially like in the depths or hills or anything else. You're going to see two large wheels attached to this 2x4 board. I call it 2x4 because it's 2 meters by 4 meters. Right next to the river is going to be four more giant tires. Let's go ahead and grab two. I'm also going to grab this control stick and we're going to bring these three things over. Simply put, you want to take all four tires and you want to have them on all four corners of this board. By the way, quick tip you could either shake the right stick or if you have a pro controller or joy cons just shake the controller real quick uh that's helpful for me when i'm recording that way it's not going to be too noisy fourth tire is on make sure they're all facing the same direction and then we're going to take our controller and we're going to put it right in the middle of this two by four board now you can create this with a two by four or a four by eight like that large metal slab over there and they serve different uses I use this one anytime that I'm going to be in a wet or foresty area. I'm going to be able to go through. I can drive over somewhat large obstacles. I can crush boxes like look at this little bowling pin. I'm just going to drive over it. The second one's actually going to break it, which is pretty cool. These small fences, I come at it straight on and boom, just like a Land Rover, we're driving over it. These chunks of Sky Island, no problema like a Jeep parked on a rock outside of a car dealership, you could climb over them with ease. If you own a Jeep Wrangler, you need to rebuild this right now in Tears of the Kingdom, and then you could thank me later. The only time you wouldn't want this specific ATV is if you're going over lava, which isn't very common. But in that case, then you would definitely want something made out of stone. There are pros and cons to having such a small board for an ATV. The pro is you're not gonna get stuck on anything. The con is you now increase your likelihood of being flipped over. But in my opinion, it doesn't happen that often, so it's not really that much of an issue. I definitely recommend saving this one as an auto build. If you have none of the materials, then it costs 18 Zonite, 
but chances are you're gonna have a whole bunch of big wheels that you're never gonna be using. And the only thing you're actually going to have to pay for is this small board, which is only three Zonite. An affordable mid-range land vehicle. Now let's talk about compact land vehicles. I have been using one specific one this entire game, pre-release and now, which is my favorite thing for quick Korok puzzles. I need to get somewhere fast. I don't typically use this in the depths though. And it's gonna require an item that isn't actually available here in Tarrytown, which is the stabilizer. We're gonna be building a motorized unicycle. And anytime that you're going to be building a unicycle, you actually need it to be balanced well. I'm gonna take one of these small wheels, I'm gonna take a stabilizer while it's still laying down and I'm going to line it up right with that little circle right there in the middle. Now we're just going to orient it to stand upright, grab our controller, bring it to the right side, and once again attach it on top of that circle. This is my favorite. Compact, I need to get somewhere fast, and I don't want it to cost a lot. This is what I build when I don't want to even take things out of my inventory. And one of the best parts about this is once you go to auto build it, I just click on it, all three things are made, it builds and it falls down. It's either going to be on the stabilizer set side heavy or on the controller side heavy, but it's almost always going to be landing flat. You don't even have to climb on it in order to control it. I'm just standing next to it. I hate cumbersome vehicles that you have to sort of climb on top of. I want to stand next to it. I want to hit A and I want to go. This thing is fast. It whips. The stabilizer takes almost no additional battery power. I don't know if it takes any battery power at all. This thing is convenient. It can go over small hills. However, it really, really fails anytime that it comes to a large hill mostly because of the lack of clearance that we have because of the stabilizer. Now, unfortunately, if you take the stabilizer and you lift it up a little bit higher, then you're not able to climb on it as easily. That's the reason this is the, I need to get somewhere quick. It's just gonna be one point to another point. I'm not gonna be driving everywhere with it. Also, you can see how battery efficient this is. And as opposed to the ATV, I don't need to hold forward to go faster. In fact, if I just put the controller down, it just goes. One of the bad parts is it's a little loose on the steering, so whichever way that you last told it to steer, it's going to be leaning in that direction. Nope, not in the water. And it reverses. Very important for a land-based vehicle if you hit a tree or a rock or something else. 10 out of 10 recommend. It only costs nine Zonite, or if you have the items in your inventory, which chances are you have stabilizers, but you're not using them for a lot of stuff in the early slash mid slash mid late game, definitely use stabilizers for this. By the way, to get stabilizers, you can go to, which is the device dispenser below the water temple. You can get here very easily if you just fly over from the South Laneru Sky Archipelago, or if you have the Zora armor, you can sw swim up the waterfall. It's right here next to this shrine, and this is one of my favorite places because you're also getting fans, which I'm always out of, wings, which I have too much of all the time, batteries, who's ever mad at that, and stabilizers. Next, let's talk about hovercrafts. So this right here is a cart, and I think it's one of the worst things in the game, and it never helps. This is a sled, though, and if you don't already have a sled shield, oh, please make a sled shield. Having a sled on your shield drastically reduces the drag that ground surfaces have for shield surfing, and I believe it's also going to help with durability. So here's a Hylian shield. If I shield surf, that's how far I go. But if I sled shield surf, the amount of drag that's present is almost non-existent. So on flat ground, I went what? six, eight, ten times further. But as far as hovercrafts go, we're gonna be grabbing one fan. We're gonna be putting it at the back of the sled. We're gonna grab our same controller from over here. I bought the Zelda Pro controller and I feel like, I feel like the, the gyro, the motion controls don't kick in when they supposed to. Like I need to tap the right stick before they kick in. I don't know if my controller's broken. This unfortunately isn't too efficient on battery. So if you're ever in an area like the sand in the Gerudo Desert, then anytime that you're facing on a downhill, 
Just stop controlling it, stand in the middle and let it coast while you regain your battery if you don't have a lot of battery in the first place. You cannot reverse at all, which kind of sucks, especially when I hit this extremely small ramp. And while you can go up small inclines and especially loose sand in the desert, I think there's at least two shrines that require you to actually move on loose sand, which wasn't a problem for me at all because I was already using this. You can go through extremely shallow water like this puddle amount of water, but anything deeper than that and it doesn't float. By the way, I also recorded a video today on how to extend your battery and how to farm crystallized charges. Later on today, I'm gonna have this video out. So there you go, you're gonna farm crystallized charges, get more battery, you're gonna be good to go. If future Austin remembers, he's already gonna have a boop in the top corner about how to do that. So this hovercraft only costs nine zonite. If you're probably not using sleds enough for anything, so this hovercraft, easy to make. Now when it comes to crossing bodies of water, there's essentially just two sizes that you can go with. One is going to be smaller, involving a two by four piece of wood, just like this. I'm just gonna pull out my auto build because it's essentially a hovercraft, except instead of a sled, it's just gonna be this two by four. And just by putting these things together, and then putting it on a body of water, you've now just made a sea bearing vessel. Taking the control stick and putting it in the middle, we're now gonna be a lot more balanced and we're not going to be leaning off the side nearly as much. Now granted, because our surface area is so small, if you lean in a certain direction, Link will continue to have that side of the boat lower, like you see right here. So you're gonna to have to counter steer in order to be upright. That's one of the sacrifices by having this smaller board. You could choose a larger wooden board, like a four by eight, but definitely not a four by four. I've run into so many issues whenever the piece of wood is squared off. So this four by eight piece of wood, it stays afloat a lot better, but we're nowhere near as nimble as we were. Granted, we remain upright, which is nice, but for quick little trips like Koroks, I kind of like the little one. Helps me maneuver better. Plus, when you go to auto build this, it's just going to cost three zonite because you're going to need to build that board. And for the cost of three, a control stick and a fan crossing any body of water any size, who's mad at that? Next, let's talk about hot air balloons. Hot air balloons are a very efficient way to make it up to a high altitude without actually using a lot of resources. Now, if you didn't know, you can actually include things like torches or sticks in builds and they will remain there when you auto build. That right there is a torch. An auto built torch, you can't remove it, you can't put it in your inventory or anything. I know that torches are available in the second room of the Sapapa Shrine and I'm sure they're available everywhere else. This is just typically the one place that I go to for it. Unfortunately, because this torch is off to the right, it's not going to be lit by this flamethrower. You've probably seen me build this before in my videos because it's a fantastic build. If I turn this on and that torch was actually facing in the right place, that way when I turn this off, the torch remains lit and it's able to continue keeping the hot air balloon in the air. So I'd recommend for you to build this now without the torch, and then once you get a torch, build it, add the torch, save that instead. As someone who lives in New Jersey, and someone who's gone to the Quick Check Hot Air Balloon Festival before, big fan of hot air balloons. Don't know if you realize this, but the Hindenburg happened in New Jersey. <laughs> Is that the reason we have a hot air balloon festival? Okay, let's talk about flying machines because that's everyone's favorite thing to talk about. Flying machines are not efficient at all for battery when you're starting off the game because for you to defy gravity and then have enough lift in order for you to actually gain altitude or maintain altitude while in the air is very difficult. And because of that, your battery is going to drain very fast. I've tried several different positions of having just two fans and a controller, including this layout, which I'm going to not recommend. It's nice because, you know, also they're nowhere near level right now, but I'm going to disassemble this in a moment, so forget that. Yeah, this, it has pretty nice handling, but you have to constantly hold back on the control stick in order to not just fall down. One fan on its own doesn't really have enough lift 
in order for you to do anything. So you're just gonna kind of stand there and then awkwardly try to not topple over. In some of the Sky Islands, you're gonna be having a control stick on a four x four with four fans and batteries attached to it. If you have extra batteries there, then yes, it's very effective. But if you're on a limited battery supply, I am gonna recommend that you do this, which is one flat fan, one controller at 45 degree angle, and another flat fan. The most difficult part of this build is actually getting the fans to be perfectly in line with this controller. It is not easy. It is difficult. It's gonna take you 10, 15 minutes to get it absolutely perfect. But once you do, save it as an auto build. And anytime that you're near two fans and a controller or whip it out, or for the price of nine Zonite, you're gonna be able to fly forward and fly quickly. If you hold back, you could ascend in height somewhat efficiently. And see how Link's leaning to the right? That's because my first fan is ever so slightly too far to one side. That's the reason that we're drifting to one side and it's not good. Take the time, figure it out, otherwise you're gonna be living with that margin of error as long as you're going to be re-auto building this. I really did wish that we were able to have more than eight favorites, thanks to Tarry Town's ample supply of all the materials that we could possibly need. I'm just going to gather two rockets, a controller, three fans, a control stick, and this wing right here. This is my favorite go-to build that I use all of the time in Sky Islands, especially when there's just random batteries lying around. Listen, this build right here, you've seen it in my videos before, you've seen it in my Shrine Hunter series. If that's really said, I don't know. This is a top-notch build. With three fans, a wing is able to gain altitude. With the rockets on either side, you're able to get immediate altitude and you don't have to worry about having carts. You don't have to worry about being on one of those glide rails. You're just good to go soon as you start it off. And I would highly recommend if you're planning on rebuilding this entire thing with just Zonite, if you're really rich in Zonite like that, still take out the rockets because you may be in a position that you're gonna need even more height and less distance. In that case, you wanna take the rockets off and just adjust them to be upright. So that way, once you climb on here, you're gonna shoot up really high, and now your starting altitude, we just gained about 70 meters of height. From here, we're able to navigate exactly where we wanna go. And then for this wing, right before your battery's exhausted, just, just stop powering it, and then use it as a passive wing to control where you wanna go. Stand near the back toward the middle to try to maintain altitude, and then once your battery's recharged enough, Oh, did you see how clean that was? We couldn't do that without a control stick. And now we get to talk about a neat little trick that I'm not too good at yet, but I have seen some people and speedrunners do this trick. So let's try to gain altitude. We're at a battery, the battery's fallen down. We're nowhere near where we wanna be and we don't have nearly enough distance to get there because of stamina reasons or whatever else. While you're paragliding, don't hold forward. Take out a wing. And now we're gonna hit B, hold forward, and then fall on it. If you time it just right, you're gonna be able to land on the wing and extend the duration of how long you're able to float forward towards something. It's a very neat trick. In my first playthrough, I had like 52 wings left over because honestly, you're not gonna be using wings that much. Almost every time that you need a wing, there's gonna be one sitting on the floor for you. So they're just gonna be sitting in your inventory doing nothing. You know, speedrunners are so great for Zelda games. Thanks, guys. And boom, just like that, we went from Tarrytown to almost to the Wrist Peninsula. Modest distance, but we did it completely passively, no power required. And I think that's the neat part about all of this. I probably don't have nearly enough height to actually continue this, this little trick to get all the way over there, but still. Okay, anything else? Uh, batteries. I would not recommend having batteries in your auto build. As you can see right here, this is the exact same build I just talked about, but there's a battery attached, so it has a price of 30 Zonite. As opposed to, the exact same build without it is a price of 21 Zonite. 
That's because batteries cost nine. Big batteries, I assume, cost more. I don't know, I haven't saved one yet. I would recommend deciding if you wanna add batteries and or lights as a game time decision. Put down a save before you go and take anything out of your inventory. That way you're not gonna be wasting resources. If you didn't build it right, or if you don't have enough battery or enough stamina, then you know exactly what items you need to get in order to make your complete trip doable. Um, and one more thing, rocket shields. Good chance you're going through rockets at a somewhat fast pace, right? This is my go-to for rockets, which is right above the Hebra region in the West Hebra Sky Archipelago. And I believe you can reach this island fairly easily from the tower, which is right here. If not, then you can definitely reach it from the Wind Temple. If you just need some height, you don't have any rocket shields, you only have a small amount of rockets in your inventory, look at how many springs you have. Because chances are, you got a lot of springs. Because you're not really using springs for anything. Yeah, you could use it for a quick shield surf, but other than that, not the most helpful thing in the world. Take two springs, favor them as an auto build. From that, we can go from a height of nine to 75. If you messed up, you just reset it. If I use a rocket shield, I go from a height of eight to 67, pretty much the exact same thing. So save your rocket shields, start using springs more often, and you'll be good to go. It's gonna be a lot easier to gain that little bit of extra height using, oh! Hi, Dinral, I didn't know you came out of here. Springs are multiplicative, however, you see diminishing returns once you hit three, or once you hit four, I don't think there's really any increase at all, so you should never build more than three springs high. Most times, never more than two springs high. Uh, anything else I wanna talk about? Nope, until you get to crazy high amounts of battery or using lots of large Zonai charges to power your stuff, nothing. Oh, there is one neat little thing. If you take a battery, attach a battery to a hover stone, and then put a rocket on a hover stone, climb on top of the hover stone, turn it on, it's gonna bring you really high up in the air, and then you're just gonna remain there for a long period of time because Hoverstones are extremely efficient at battery. The rest of it's mostly combat related, which most of it is meh. Like I've seen videos that are like, oh, you should put a cannon on your shield, it's overpowered. It does like 12 damage. Yeah, the blast radius is cool, but I would say save your cannon shields for mining lots of zonite in the depths whenever you come to the giant zonite chunks. Guys, I hope this video on some of my favorite auto builds that you can use for your everyday life before you even get more schematics or blueprints from the Schema Stones or from the Yiga books is going to be helpful to you. These eight auto builds are mostly what I just play the entire game with or some variation of them. And if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. If there's any helpful or small or efficient builds that you've made using auto build, be sure to tweet me at Austin John Plays. I would love to see them. Maybe we make this into a little reoccurring thing. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John out.